So today I wanna to talk about imposter syndrome. Now that's a really broad topic, but every tech worker feels it at some point during their career, especially when they're first learning. And part of my job as a mentor is to help students cope with those feelings of doubt, uncertainty, intimidation, and just getting overwhelmed. Now there's a lot of reasons that you'll trigger imposter syndrome while you're learning and even into your career. But not all of those triggers are bad things. And today I wanna to talk about a very specific type of trigger that is a good thing. It's a sign of progress. Now I'm Eric Wise from Skill Foundry. I am a software architect turned educator. And thousands of people have gone through my training programs over the last decade. And I've personally mentored and trained hundreds of people. So I have seen imposter syndrome in all of its forms, in all of its scenarios, and I'm here to help. So I was chatting the other day in the Skill Foundry Discord with one of my learners, and they made a comment that I have heard many times throughout my career. And the comment is basically along the lines of, I'm feeling really overwhelmed and I'm feeling a lot of self-doubt because I now realize how much I don't know. And I see all these frameworks out there, these different languages, these different techniques, and it's intimidating and it's overwhelming. And I just wanna say, this is a completely normal feeling. And it's a good thing. And let me explain why. Because when you first start learning something, you don't know what you don't know. And you are too ignorant, really, to be intimidated. So the fact that you start to realize just how many choices there are out there, how many different approaches there are, to solving problems in programming, that is a sign of growth. It shows that you're moving beyond just kind of hyper-focusing on the syntax and remembering to put your semicolons and close your parentheses, and you're taking a step up and you're now thinking about the solution and what is the optimal way to solve the problem given the tools that you have. And I think this is something that a lot of people, especially you know if you're following social media, you don't really get to see that. Even from people like me, you don't get to see the coping that we do. Because I don't know everything. I've been in the field for over 20 years and I've been very successful. But you could drive a truck through the things that I don't personally know how to do. So why am I not paralyzed by imposter syndrome? Why am I not overwhelmed by the sheer size of the space? And the answer is, it kind of stops with experience. Over the years, I have been stuck and I have not known and I have had to do research and I have had to fail and I have had to iterate those solutions until I got it right. And these days, it's not so much that I know everything, it's that I've developed the confidence with experience that if I encounter something that I don't know, that I can learn it, that I can figure it out. And that's just something over time that you will develop if you keep practicing, if you keep learning. So when you do get stuck, yeah, it's frustrating. I've wanted to throw my laptop out the window several times during my career, usually several times a month. But that's okay because that is an opportunity to learn and grow. And when that light bulb comes on and you get that rush of now knowing, now it works, now you understand. Every time you do that, it's gonna chip away at that imposter syndrome until suddenly it will mostly be gone. And if we bring this back to your learning journey, this is why my programs have always had a lot of capstone projects. I frequently make people prove that they understand what they're doing by building things from scratch. And every course I write has a capstone for that reason. Because if you can take something from zero, from scratch, build it and achieve it, that is a big part of eliminating that imposter syndrome. And there's a lot of people out there in social media, they talk about this thing, tutorial hell. It happens all the time. And the reason people get stuck in tutorial hell is that they get dependent on doing what somebody shows them and not taking that knowledge and applying it to new scenarios and starting from scratch. 
So regardless of whether you're taking my courses or learning on your own or you know, taking a course through a college or something like that, if you aren't getting time to apply what you've learned to new problems from scratch, then that imposter syndrome is going to remain until you start doing that, until you get your hands on the keyboards and build that confidence. Now to kind of break down the learning journey that everybody has to go through, I like to think about this in terms of levels. So everybody starts at what I call level zero. And at level zero, you don't know anything. Like you are learning everything from scratch. You don't know the terms, you don't know how to search for things because you don't speak the language correctly, and you are just starting to explore the topic. Everybody starts there, everybody can get through that part. <laughs> now, the next level up is that you start to understand those fundamentals. And if you're talking about coding specifically, this is when you start to really learn the basic syntax and you start to learn the basic concepts of languages and how programs work. And you start to really understand that terminology. And when you're approaching a problem, you start to have a general idea of the pieces that you're going to need to bring together to get that thing working. Now the next level up, and this is where you start to become employable, is that you can apply those things. So at first, you're practicing those fundamentals. And now you're in a place where you can say, yes, if you give me a problem that can be solved by the tools that I have in my tool belt, I know how to apply these things. And one of the things you're gonna notice as you get to this phase is that when you're writing code, you're gonna start feeling things. And, and this is really nebulous. I apologize that it's nebulous, but it's really hard to describe a feeling. But you're gonna start feeling when you're writing code that you're starting to go off the rails. You're gonna start feeling like your approach is somehow wrong, that something's not gonna work out right, or maybe your code is getting too complicated and you feel like there's a simpler way. And this is where most junior developers live. This, this is completely normal. But that feeling, even though it causes imposter syndrome, is a good thing because it's your brain starting to recognize patterns. You've been down this road before. You've done things similar to this that didn't work out. And as those patterns start to emerge, you start to have those feelings while you're writing the code. Now the next level up is where you start to see your mid-level developers. These are the people that when you give them a problem to solve, they start having those feelings before they write the code. They start anticipating where those problems are going to be, where the complexity is. They'll stop and understand that they might need to do some more research before they just dive in and start slinging code at the problem. That is a mid-level skill. Then the highest level of skill is where the senior architects come in. These people can take what they know and they can apply it to completely new problems. They can start from scratch, they understand the trade-offs, they understand where their knowledge stops and where they should seek out a specialist. And this is especially important because I can tell you something as a software architect, most of us tend to be T-shaped, which means we know a little bit about these things, we know a lot, about some things we've really dug into, and then we know a little bit about some other things. Like me personally, I came up as a software engineer and I specialized in database applications. So my SQL, my middle tier code is really, really strong. My front end code, it's passable, but it's not my specialty. If somebody is building a front end application and they want some real fancy whiz bang things, I'm gonna go hire a specialist to do that for me. I can do the basics, but that's not my specialty. You start looking at things like security or server administration, things like that. I know enough about those things to make technical decisions, but I need a specialist if I wanna get way down into the details or when it's really important. And that is completely normal. But that's that tier five, when I can start taking what I know, 
push it to the boundaries and understand enough about the rest of the world to create brand new things. And another thing that you will see at that level is that you will be able to mentor and teach others. Because I'm in the camp that says that you don't really understand something deeply until you can explain it in your own words to somebody else. So one of the things I do with a lot of my students is when we're preparing for job interviews, when we're talking about, you know, getting through that technical interview process, which is really stressful, my challenge to them is to explain things to me without using textbook definitions and to explain things using the code that they've written in their projects. And let me assure you, the better you get at that, the more success you will have when you're interviewing for a job. And I realized that I just went up to senior architect level. Do you feel overwhelmed? There's a lot of steps and a lot of years in between where we started, not knowing anything, and being able to create new things from the ether and teach other people. That is a long journey. But this is also a trigger of imposter syndrome for beginners because a lot of beginners think that they need to be higher up on that scale than they need to to get into their first role. So to be clear, getting into that first role, when you go look at that job rec, you're gonna see skills like Java or C Sharp or JavaScript or SQL. Those core skills, if you understand the fundamentals and you can apply them, that is enough. That is enough to be a junior entry-level developer. You can start applying for jobs. If somebody gives you a problem with those sets and you don't know how to approach it, then you are not ready yet. But nobody expects a junior or entry-level developer to start evaluating the trade-offs of different decisions. That's a mid-level skill. Nobody should be expecting you to mentor other people or make high level, really impactful technical decisions about creating new systems from scratch. That is a senior level skill. You need to be able to take what you know and apply it to a very small slice of problems that you are going to be given by your mid-level and senior developers. Those are usually going to come in the form of tickets. They're gonna say, go here, do this thing. And if you have the basic tools in your toolkit, you should be able to do those things or figure them out. That is an entry level skill. Nobody wants your opinions. Nobody needs to know what you think. That's something you're going to learn. It's something you're going to grow into, but it's not something that is expected of you out of the gate. So to bring things back to where we started, it is completely normal to be overwhelmed when you finally realize how big this space is. All the tools, all the frameworks, all the different approaches, all the considerations, security, performance, all of these things come together to build really complicated things. And that journey of picking up things and learning how to do things and being successful, that it, it's so satisfying. It is the thing that I love about being a software developer. And you will get there. But I don't want you to feel imposter syndrome about the learning journey. I want you to celebrate that when you start to realize these things, that it's a sign of progress. It's not a sign of not being able to do something. It's a sign that you can see where the path is leading and you can start to evaluate all these things that you need to do to be a successful programmer. And from there, it's just time and practice. Happy coding.